Have you ever gone outside, looked up and noticed a big, beautiful moon, pulled out your phone or camera, tried to take a picture, and it turned out looking something like this? Well, tonight we're gonna fix that. I'm Walt, this is Delta Astrophotography, and tonight we're gonna learn how to photograph the moon. The moon is typically the worst enemy of an astrophotographer, and that's because it's so bright, it overpowers the dim light coming from distant nebula and galaxies. A typical astrophotography night with the moon goes something like this. Please, just go away! I'm sick of your shit. But tonight is a harvest moon, so we're gonna photograph it anyway. It is a full moon, and I would recommend not usually shooting the full moon because it's so bright, it washes out a lot of cool details in the craters. Something like a crescent moon or a half moon would look a lot better because it creates these shadows and you get to see cool details in the craters. But a full moon could be fun too, so that's what we're gonna do tonight. Now let's see what we need to shoot it. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. This means they I might finally be able to use this and see Uncle Jeff's base, base up there on the moon. moon. This is so, so exciting. exciting. No, we're not going to need any of that crap. All we need is a DSLR or mirrorless camera that has manual settings and something like this 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens. This is a pretty budget setup I have here. This is a Canon T5i that I got for $300 on eBay. And this Canon 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens cost me about 75 bucks. When it comes to your camera, a crop sensor camera is usually going to be better because they are more zoomed in, although a full frame camera will be just fine. But if you have an ASPC or crop sensor camera, which if your camera costs under $1,000, it probably is, then that's gonna be your best bet. We'll also need a tripod and a remote of some kind or just your 10 second timer because both of these will allow you to take pictures without having to touch your camera. That's vital and as you will see in a few minutes, Every time you touch your camera while trying to photograph the moon, it shakes and it will cause the moon to be blurry and we do not want that. So let's go ahead and go outside and get ready to shoot the moon. All right, now we're outside. Got the camera on the tripod pointed up near the moon. Got the lens zoomed all the way into 300 millimeters. Now it's time to set our camera settings. First thing we need to do is turn the dial on the camera to manual mode, then look on the lens and switch it from autofocus to manual focus. Now let's dial in our camera settings. Camera settings, yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay, one of the first things we need to do is make sure our camera is saving our photos as raw files instead of JPEGs. It might be different on your camera menu, but you just need to find out where it is and set it to save to raw instead of JPEG. Raw is an uncompressed file. It's gonna be a higher quality and you can edit it more in post-processing. Now let's go to the top. We have shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Starting with ISO, let's set it to around 100 because the moon is so bright. ISO really controls the brightness. Aperture, let's set it to about 8.0. That'll allow our photo to be very sharp and in focus. And we are going to set our shutter speed manually when we aim up at the moon. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, I've got live view turned on and the moon framed up. Now we can see it's way too bright, it's blown out. So I'm gonna need to adjust my shutter speed. There's going to be a dial near my right hand up at the top. I'm gonna dial it with my pointer finger. It's gonna make it brighter or dimmer. I'm gonna turn it to the right for me to make it dimmer. All right, that's pretty dim, but it's way out of focus. So let's turn our focus wheel until we can start seeing a little detail in that moon. There we go, look at that. I'm gonna hit the zoom button on the camera itself and zoom in a little bit. Check that out. Now let's fine tune that focus. Look at that. Let's adjust the uh, shutter speed a little bit more to make it a little dimmer so we can see a few more details. Check that out. I'm gonna zoom in some more. You can really see some details in here now. I'm gonna fine tune. You're just gonna wanna take your time with this. Get it as sharp as you can. There we go, I can see a ton of detail on the moon now. I'm gonna turn off the zoom button. I'm just gonna get the moon centered back in the photo one more time. All right, we're ready to shoot. I've got my remote connected, so I don't have to touch the camera. And here we go. Easy as that. Pretty simple, right? But taking the picture is only half the fun. Now let's get into the computer and do some processing. Now I've got the photo opened up in Adobe Lightroom. This is part of Adobe's $10 a month photography plan that also includes Photoshop, and I highly recommend getting it. At the top right corner, we can see our final camera settings we used, ISO 100, zoomed in at 300 millimeters, 
aperture f 8.0 and a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second. Let's go ahead and zoom in so we can edit better. Just hover the mouse right over the center of the moon and left click. There we go. Now, as you can see, the moon is a bit yellow. It's kind of a warm color. Let me close out all these tabs here. All right, yeah, the moon is a bit yellow. It's a bit warm. We're gonna correct that by using our white balance adjustments. Temperature is gonna make things either cooler or warmer, warmer being more of your yellows, oranges, and reds. So we're gonna slide it away from that direction towards the blue. All right, cooled that down a bit. As we can see, it's also a bit green. So I'm gonna come down to tint and move it away from green towards the right. There we go. That looks pretty balanced. I like that a lot. Now we're gonna bring out all this detail in the moon. I'm just gonna bring up the contrast a little bit. But as we can see, the moon is overly washed out. So we're gonna bring the highlights down a touch. There we go. Shadows down a touch and blacks down just a touch. All these adjustments are very subtle. Texture up just a touch and clarity as well. Definitely don't want to go too crazy with clarity as tempting as it is because it can look awful. That looks more like a charcoal drawing than an actual photograph. So I'm just gonna leave that down here and bring up vibrance a little bit and saturation as well. Now we'll start to notice this green ring around the moon and all this fake looking green throughout the moon. I could adjust that here, but another way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna come down here to HSL color. This brings up our color mixer, make sure saturation is selected. I'm just gonna pull green down. There we go. Still see a little bit of aqua bluish up here. That's not very natural, at least up here it isn't. So we're gonna bring that down as well. And there we go, no more weird edges. We're gonna come down here to the color grading tab now and come up to mid-tones and just pull that down a little bit. Pull shadows down a little bit and highlights up a touch. Look at all that detail we've brought out. That's just insane looking. Final tab we can look at is detail. We can see Lightroom has already added a little sharpening. If I pull that down, the moon does look a bit fuzzy. But if we bring it up too much, it looks weird. So right about where they had it was fine. Yeah, this looks great. Noise reduction, we used an ISO of 100, so there's not a lot of noise in there, but if you needed to buff it up just a touch, that's okay. But if you turn it up too much, it becomes real soft and that doesn't look good. So I'm just gonna bring it almost all the way down. And that's about it. We can go back to the top and do a few final adjustments, maybe bring the overall exposure up a little bit. Let's see if we can get a little more color with a little more vibrance. And that's about it. I'm gonna click on the moon to zoom it back out. And all we have to do is just come over here to our crop tool. I like to keep this right here set to lock. So it locks in my original aspect ratio. And we just crop into our heart's desire. Now keep in mind, the more you crop, the more resolution you lose. But if we're just making a photo for Instagram or something like that, no one's really even gonna notice. I'm gonna hit enter. That looks good. I'm gonna just hit the F key to go full screen. And that is one beautiful detailed picture of the moon right there. And there you have it. Not a whole lot to it, is there? Now there are other more advanced moon photographing techniques that we're going to be doing in the future. So if you're into that kind of stuff, please subscribe. And if you liked this video, give me a like and a comment. Let's talk about it. You can even hit me up on Instagram and we can chat about astrophotography there. Well, that about does it for now. So as always, stay spacey and good night. Stupid, Stupid human. human.